Hello, everybody on Periscope. I'm just getting started. This is uh, Sudha Jamte from uh, Silicon Valley, and this is the IoT show. So today, we have a topic called productizing an IoT. I heard from so many of you, every time I put a topic and I just uh, you know say, this is the show, I hear a bunch of questions saying, what are you talking about? Why are you talking about this? And you know, or why don't you include this type of thing? Today's thing was, people actually thought taking an IoT after they built a prototype and then making that into a functional, you know, uh, fully viable product out in the market was the big deal. So I wanted to share something with you. Here's my IoT that I have done recently. <laughs> it's on a Edison board. I was at the Amazon Hackathon, and this is a accelerator, this thing that I'm shaking. And it's a maraca, which is like a toy for babies. And so this is how people build when they have an idea to build a prototype. I'm not talking about taking this and making it a pretty little you know, box unit that comes with nice industrial design. What I'm talking about is I have this idea of, of an IoT. I'm able to test and build it. How do I make it a product? There are so many different ways of productizing it in terms of beyond industrial design. Industrial design is an important part for IoT devices. Beyond that, what is the what is the user experience going to be for the user? Google launched on Hub. It's a cool, tall, uh, tower-like device for a uh, Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is typically, you know, ugly-looking box hidden behind, you know, under your chair somewhere, right? So that's what I'm going to talk about. And I have never had a vendor or any product, uh, IoT product in this show so far. And I promise that it is going to be all educational vendor neutral. But I broke my rule a little bit. And I've invited Colibri founder, Thomas, here. And you will know why. Hi, Thomas. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, Tell us a little bit about you first, not just Qualibri. Tell us about you. So I, um, I'm a French man, uh, a father of three children. Uh, and I'm also an inventor. I started developing products uh, since uh, late 90s. So I build, uh, at the beginning of the Bluetooth era, I was one of the first early adopter of Bluetooth, and I built several Bluetooth devices since 2000, uh, from Bluetooth GPS to uh, Bluetooth barcode scanners and a couple of other things, and uh, created several companies in the I IoT space until uh, I created Colibri in 2013. Very cool. So Colibri is the smart toothbrush, and so you before we go into talking about stuff, why don't we see the real thing? You'll know why I made the exception to show a live product today. So the first thing is it's still morning for a lot of us. So it's a morning and, and evening activity to, to brush your teeth correctly. And so that is like the toothbrush. I'm going to give you enough. Uh, so it's very light, uh, less than 100 grams. Um, sorry, I cannot do the exact translation in pounds and ounces. So. Uh, 100 grams, so very light for kids and adults. It's a sonic technology, so you maybe not be able to hear it, but it okay. sounds like a, we lost you for a minute. It's frozen. Oh, okay. Um, okay, let me just try that. And can you see me again? Hello. Okay. Hey Thomas, I lost you. Okay, he's gone. He'll come back. Uh, and in fact, we tested this in green room mode. I've been bugging him for an hour to make sure that you know we don't run into this. So that's okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Back? Yes. Can you Yes, I can hear you. We can see you. Um, you anymore? Okay. Can you see me, or it doesn't work? Hello. Make a game out of this, Michelle. 
Yes, can you, I see you now? Yes. So I think you're in uh, audio mode. So why don't you tell us a little bit and then we switch the demo a little bit. I, so, I can try video. Yeah, you want to switch it is not yes. present? Okay, so let me do this quick so we have video here. Yes. Uh, so it's Sonic technology, so it's a, a vibrating head that you can find, which is easier for kids and adults to brush your teeth because you don't need to do the any movement. You just yeah. put it in front of your teeth and the toothbrush yeah. has all the movement. It's wireless yeah. charging. So that's yes. also something that is difficult, but 80% uh, of all IoT devices are not recharged after the battery dies. So uh, we wanted to make sure that you recharge your toothbrush easily and don't have like a typical bat replaceable battery that will be a, a problem in the bathroom for kids who are playing with a lot of those bad products. And it connects to, um, to via Bluetooth to a device. So it, it, for the purpose of the demo, I have, a, um, I have a, an, an Android device here. So this is the... Uh, you can't see the Android device. Yes, now I can see it. Yes, okay. now you see it. Yeah. And so it's going to be quite an exercise to brush my teeth while showing you this, but I'm going to do <laughs> this for the very first time for your audience. So uh, you have to think about the toothbrush uh, and the concept of the toothbrush like a Wii in your bathroom. So it's just to make it fun for kids and for adults to be able to monitor how kids are doing, brushing their teeth, and teach them how to better brush their teeth. So think about the technology like a GPS in your mouth. Like we are going to help you uh, monitor how much you brush your teeth, but also where have you been and what are the next parts of your mouth. So uh, we have uh, uh, several uh, people. So you're, that, inside uh, your app, sorry. you're inside your app and there are different and users, like different people in the family, right? You have different uh, profiles. Yeah. And as soon as you move to the activity, so I, I'm choosing to be my daughter in this very case, I have yeah. several games or activities, and we have built an open platform for game developers to develop their own games. Uh, and so I have a, we have right now a game for kids called Go Pirate that I'm going to show you. And we have another more adult-oriented device. Okay. Uh, so let's go for the kids game. Okay. And okay, it's, going out of the screen again. Yeah. Okay, so you will hear this sound, which is a parrot game running. Oh, wow. That's and like so, a mini version of Temple Run. Exactly. This is Temple Run for your teeth. So to control your character, you have to put your teeth at the right place in your mouth. I cannot do this while I'm speaking. But if I actually do very uh, stupid stuff, like now, I don't get any coins. So a good way to know whether you're doing a good job is to know if you brush your teeth correctly. So you're as soon as you finish, yeah. As soon as you finish your brushing, and it's actually so engaging that you spend two minutes doing it, you collect coins, and you can look at the better demo on our website, and then you have a report for the parents. I know the web, the, the screenshot will not be good, but I will be happy to ah, share some of you with you. Okay, you so number. I have numbers. I know how much time I've brushed my teeth for the last week. And so I can even go further and give you a map of your mouth and show which parts of your mouth you have consistently uh, forgotten. So basically, uh, we are mixing, in this device, we are mixing uh, two very important concepts of IoT. One is really a connection that helps um, make it more interactive and provide a feedback loop, but also the analytics. So we use a big data model that uh, after several hundred brushing, give some kind of a pattern of the way you brush your teeth and help you keep improving. And another part which is very important if you want to teach kids, especially is the gamification part, where we make it fun for you to, um, to brush your teeth. So now we have uh, several thousand people using it on a daily basis. And our first finding that we shared with the dental community in late June was that uh, not only do we uh, brush, we see uh, less plaque on the kids' teeth, but they're actually so engaged that they're no longer brushing their teeth, they are playing the games. So if the game tells them to go left, they go this left. Is, if the game this is, yeah, this is the thing that fascinated me. And we should talk more. So first start with, in terms of, you know, you came with, okay, let's make a brush to a smart brush. So I'm guessing you have, uh, uh, sensors on your and the bristles of the the brush, right? 
Yeah, we, we have as much we have as much technology in this toothbrush and in a drone. So the technology we have been using, and it's all often the case, is to translate a technology that is quite mature on a device and make it into another device. So you have to think about the toothbrush like a really a drone. It's able to position itself in space like a drone would do. And it's always made of uh, motion sensors, accelerometer, gyroscopes. So everything you need to, it's, uh, uh, it's called, uh, in French, inertia central. So uh, it's really like a very, very sophisticated uh, motion sensor uh, engine. OK. So that's what, that's how you collect the information. And then it's, it uh, transmits via Bluetooth, right? The charging is done by Wi-Fi, but the transmission of the information is done by Bluetooth. Yeah, your phone acts as a router. So your phone uh, collects and pre-process the data and then send it on the back end uh, via Bluetooth or 3G, depending on the way you are connected to the internet. But the, the collection of the data is uh, aggregated on the phone. So I lost you. Do you want to go to audio more? Then yes, you'll be, we'll be able to see you better. That's what, yes. Can you hear so, me better? Mm -hmm. No. OK, I cannot hear you. I'm going to uh, unplug and come back. Um, Thomas is actually based in uh, France, and uh, he yes. happens to be visiting San Francisco. He's still connecting remote. Hi, yes, Thomas. Please. We lost you completely. We lost you. So yeah. you'll have to talk. You'll have to talk after the. You were saying it. You were explaining how the the toothbrush has the whole technology of a drone with accelerometer sensors. Last yes. I heard about how it connects by Bluetooth to the Bluetooth of your phone, and that's how it yes. communicates. After that, we lost you. So what are you telling okay, us? So, so the it communicate actually that was a good summary of what I just explained. It's like uh, the device connected via Bluetooth. Uh, we actually use uh, kind of uh, older Bluetooth than the latest one. The reason is because we want uh, there is a lot of devices you are ready to put in your bathroom, but maybe not a eight hundred dollar tablet uh, or eight hundred dollar iPhone. So we wanted to be compatible with the old legacy devices. So we have kind of a uh, Bluetooth 2.1, which is kind of the common denominator of uh, existing Bluetooth. So in the current version of the toothbrush, we have uh, like an uh, older Bluetooth, which give us a uh, retro compatibility with a lot of Bluetooth devices. Okay. Like old iPads and stuff like that. So I wanted the show to talk about productizing because what fascinated me is, you know, we have the fit bands, we have, you know, many IoT devices essentially are sending data. And there's power in the data, right? And they make sense of the data and then either you know trigger some action or show us trends to do something, right? So, and most of the times I've actually seen the data, right? Except for a few invisible apps out there, which are more like platform time apps. So when you came up with this idea, I just want to talk about how did you go about productizing it? So first you thought it will talk to a phone. And uh, talking by Bluetooth is good. And then you wanted all kinds of uh, phones to be, or uh, mobile devices to be connected. So you decided on baking yeah, so, in Bluetooth support. Yeah, Tell me more so, about your productizing and, and decisions you made and what you dropped or what you iterated. OK. So uh, first of all, this is so just the, the beginning of the story is really like, as the father, I wanted to know whether my kids were brushing their teeth or not. So the first design idea was really like, I want to know when I come back from home too late for even watching my kids, I want to know wherever I am in the world whether my kids are brushing their teeth or not. That was the first master idea. The second thing I wanted to do is to make sure they keep being engaged. So the second master idea, which uh, the product had to fulfill, was to say, hey, it doesn't, it's useless to have a device that collects data which is not used by the end user. So I need to create an engagement that is strong enough for my kids so that they they will keep using it even if I'm not there because you know. Yeah. So 
then the idea came to say, hey, the device that they want the most is actually my own iPhone and my own tablet because they want to play on it. So that's how we integrated the device that I want the info from, which is a toothbrush to a connection to the device Mike is desired, which was my iPhone or my tablet. So I merged two of them, and, and but I needed to have an application layer, which was games, because my daughter, when we discussed this, she's 10 and she was at the, at the stage eight, she said, it's boring. So then we went to, not on the toothbrush at all, but we went on the design of the complete experience in how do we uh, keep a kid focused for two minutes? And that's, uh, so there were a lot of iteration on how do we do that? Uh, first of all, uh, you need to hear noise. You need to have a good sound. You've seen the parrot as making good sound. Why is because in a, in a bathroom, you have an environment that is pretty hostile. You have water, you have noise. You, and so uh, your vision and your senses, your vision and the ability for you to touch your phone should be as limited as possible. So the sound is actually the main driver. And in design phase, we actually thought about, we, are we going to have, a, we needed to have a toothbrush that make a, a nice sound or not too strong versus other electric toothbrushes. So we did a lot of thinking about how do we make the sound in the bathroom uh, nice, not too boring, but very engaging. So you, you hear a lot of uh, stuff that you're using, very engaging game, like Temple Run, like a, an engaging music, but also the coins falling in your pocket. So you have this kind of uh, uh, very uh, animal sen you know, spirit that we try to uh, trigger in doing this. And it works very well. The third aspect uh, that uh, in the engagement phase that we found was efficient is the um, uh, competition. Uh, because it's very hard when you design a product to be uh, good for a kid of three year old and good for a kid of six year old and a 12 year old and even a parent. But as soon as we introduce competition, then the question was not about your age, but are, are you brushing better than daddy? Uh, and, and so that's it, the leader it, code that you picked in. Yeah, it's a leader so the, for the family. Yeah, exactly. So the good thing about it is actually it's actually it's interesting to say that we are an IT company, but uh, the I, the device itself is just part of the bigger world, which is all about uh, having something that sticks you enough to collect as much data as we can, so we can send them to the dentist or to the parents. So. Uh, everything is a mean to an end, and the end is not the device. The end is really the service that we provide to the dental community, providing a new set of data that never nobody has ever seen before. So that's really where, uh, that was the design I, phase. I have a question. Uh, so one of the things, I, the way my brain works is, when I see something, I try to connect to something else, right? So when I'm hearing or I'm talking about, you know, this IoT, uh, I love the app interface aspect. I just think it's... Phenomenal. I just can't tell you I've not endorsed any IoT device. I just love this one. Um, what, what I see in a, another realm, right, there are IoT devices for uh, uh, socks, right, You and it tells you how well you run. Uh, or there are mm -hmm. you know, there's the Zep where, you know, there's a glove and you hold that and you play, it, you know, your golf game or tennis game. And it's, tra it's collecting data. And then it is guiding the user on how well are their strokes and where their angles to guide them on the key. So when I saw your thing, that's the parallel I'm seeing. So you're checking whether I'm, you know, the kid is brushing all the all the angles of all the teeth, and you're you're collecting that information. Yes. But are you are you doing anything more instead of is it just data or is there more that you have, you know, information on how? different as parts of the of the teeth should be covered. Do you have like domain knowledge of a dentist that you're guiding them back to the right thing or you're just collecting this information on that end and sending it to the dentist or you're planning to send it to the ortho in some form? So your question relates a lot to productization. Um, you know, there, there is a, in all IoT related to healthcare and well-being, there is a, a very thin line between being a well-being device and being a medical device. And the rules of the game change dramatically if you cross the line. So uh, at the moment, as far as Colibri is concerned, we don't uh, provide any medical advice that a dentist can do. 
we position ourselves as a tool to help the hygienist or the dentist to uh, give you the right advice. However, okay. so uh, it, it's not actually for lack of knowledge. Two of our co-founders are dentists, one specialized in kids, one really specialized, like one of the most renowned French American dentists. But we, we, we are, um, we want the product to be on the market as, as quickly as possible and to have as much engagement as possible. So really our strategy is to avoid being trapped into being a medical device at this stage of maturity. So your question is not, it's actually interesting because it's not a technical problem, it's really like a legal slash liability problem. You want, yeah. to, uh, you want to be the assistant and think about Colibri as being your smart assistant at the moment. Maybe at some point the smart assistant can become a little more than an assistant like a virtual hygienist or something. But that will be uh, after two or three years of continuous uh, data collection and collaboration with the dental community. And that's basically what we are doing right now. But, uh, um, you know, one of the things that when I designed this, it was really for my own purpose and my own usage. So my primary goal was to say, how fast can I get this out on the marketplace? And if I had chosen to cross this line, uh, you will not have a toothbrush in your hands. Uh, before another two years so because you have rules about having a medical device out so this is a fantastic point in terms of you know the whole idea of productizing right it is not just yeah. that you can technically do this but you're looking at legal legal uh, liability issues and compliance for different markets and also it looks like you've made it so you're positioning your product as a non-medical device also, I see you start off with consumers so you get a viral play and you kind of get scale right with that that's Absolutely. your at least your market entry strategy, but your position that you can switch to become the friend of the dentist and the dentist will distribute this to everybody for a fee. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Right. That's basically where we want. And, and so to go further on this direction. So I, I'm not sure I have completely uh, answered your product creation question, but uh, there were some um, uh, very deep thinking about how do we make this scalable? Uh, and you, the point you just raised of not being a medical device is really one thing. And productizing such a product is super complicated because you're introducing in your bathroom, which is a highly regulated environment already, even if you're not a medical device, uh, an electrical device. So, what, so electrical safety norms across the world are very, very tough. You are introducing um, a wireless device and wave radiation in a noisy environment is also very strong. Bluetooth helps, but you know uh, you have to have something that is reliable, and so you have a lot of design, antenna design, and optimization that is very important. It was part of uh, 15 years of knowledge of our team. So uh, I would advise if your audience is building stuff that like the radio frequency and so the wireless expertise in noisy environment is something that uh, requires a little bit of wizardry and really experience. You cannot come out of school and know how to do it because science stops at some point, engineering starts. So, like, uh, you have to play with stuff and make it work. And it's, you will, it's incredible how not completely scientific those things are. Yeah, you need to know where to put your antenna and stuff like that. Um, oh, fantastic. That, so, I have one yeah. more question. We have about, we just have, you know, another four or five minutes. Okay. And everybody on Periscope, if you have questions, thank you for all your hearts. If you have questions, you can post a comment uh, on uh, YouTube or uh, Hangout. We don't have it's more broadcast, so I'll be able to answer ask uh, those questions and answer those right away. Um, I have one question from you know the last point you said about how you're bringing a wireless device into the home, right? So what about the privacy considerations or you know security considerations of you know this information about me is very valuable. Now you're not a medical device. But whether my dentist tells me to go brush my teeth two times a day, other than I, whether I brush well or not, but I, I slacken up and I don't. I brush, you know, don't brush for two minutes. You have all that information. So, yes. so on the privacy go? side, uh, it's actually one of the also very important points. I mean, on the design side of the product, we have two things that I have not covered. One is about the open API and open platform. So other people can build new games compatible with our devices. So we build this as such. So it's like a legal game and you can have more games coming into our platform while not making them. 
and it's super important in terms of approach because so anybody can go it. get it today your api, API is uh, downloadable we can just go i can make a monkey catch you know uh, banana that's my favorite uh, you, we we um we have not opened to everyone right now the api we are open it to uh, people that ask for it so okay. uh because we have we require some kind of nda to be signed okay. there's a heavy competition as you might know into the <laughs> toothbrushes and we are not always welcome <laughs> you know people have uh, you know they've been selling toothbrushes for 200 centuries and they are not like they don't like newcomers like in any industry so we have it's not widely open but uh, we are not that uh, mobile you're talking, in you're talk, sorry you're talking about your distribution into new markets yeah well I, i'm talking about uh, global go-to market which is uh, we uh, we haven't widely opened to any developer or api but we made the api open to any developer that wants to build an app uh, on a, just a request basis. So email us and we will have, give you access to our API. Okay. Um, so that's the first part. The second part is, as you know, we were born in France and France and Germany are the most terrible countries in terms of people privacy. Uh, and, and so we abide by the French regulations, uh, which are stronger than the US one, but we actually put the French regulations in place globally. And in a nutshell, your data are yours. You are asked to opt in in sharing your data for research purposes. Uh, aggregated data, so there will no, be no individual data that will be shared with any third party, with your name, no in anything, um, without your prior consent. Your data are stored locally, so by region. So if you are in the US, your data are stored in the US. If you are in Europe, your data are stored in Europe. So nobody will be able to act for ask for a judge to collect your data. If you are in Europe, you are a, US city, a, a European citizen. If you are in the US, you are a US citizen. So we make sure we abide by the, the most strict laws in terms of uh, data storage. And uh, we do use for RD purposes, anonymized data sets. So there will be no connection between you. Uh, but uh, we are using some data sets to improve our machine learning uh, algorithm to be even more predictive and to be completely uh, cover, to cover all the space. Another thing we are doing right now is we are launching, launching an R&D campaign for people that agree to be uh, filmed while brushing their teeth with Colibri. And so we can even keep improving our algorithm by uh, checking with our prediction is 90% correct, 95% correct, 99.99% correct. So we're asking for people that are ready to do that. But it's completely like, nothing is done without your really explicit and prior consent. And so this is very important for Colibri because we see ourselves as being, uh, uh, you know, really our, our, our users are the most important part. So parents and moms and fathers of kids, they want to have, you know, full control about their uh, family data. And so that's what we give them. This, this is awesome. This is awesome. Because that was one of my biggest concern on how do you bake that, especially when you say then that can go to the orthodontist, right? Even if you're not planning to do that today. Again, in a parallel world, I saw an IoT device being built. Called, I think it was called Hindsight. And it's a camera you attach uh, tailgating, right? For, to stop tailgating to your car. And then you can collect information about the tailgater. You get their license plate and you get all kinds of information. Every time they come closer, the, there's, a, there's a sign or you know light, LED light that goes red. And you will move away to the right distance, it goes green. But they were collecting data and they said they can aggregate data with the license plate. And they say, at some point, we can send it to the DMV and yeah. it can impact your driving records. The same thing about health, right? If you can send that information to, you know, to your uh, healthcare uh, provider or your uh, insurance. So that's the, the the fear that consumers have. So I'm happy. We have this discussion. We have this discussion all the time. Uh, and so uh, on that matter, you have read three approaches. It's actually funny. One is if you are, uh, it's your data, you want to keep full control. It. As a father, you want to have also the information about your children. When they reach the age of 12, they no longer want to share it with their parents. So we are actually having this kind of uh, fight going on. Uh, we, there is another application that we never envisioned initially when the toothbrush, which actually is being big, very big, is for the elderly that need professional care, like uh, great-grandfather, etc., that are actually in nursing homes. 
in this very case, uh, the people that are at to brush their teeth, it's very important to keep uh, all the people in, in, in good shape to have a clean, uh, to have their teal, teeth clean every day. And so actually a lot of people in those nursing homes have uh, discovered that this very device is able to uh, send back data to the family to know, oh, today my grandfather, which is 95, has his teeth brushed, and so I have data. And that's reassuring for the family as well as for the nurses that know that their job is uh, monitored, but in a positive way, so they can have, oh, you've missed this part, and you missed this part. It's actually, it's probably one of the biggest business opportunities that is not as fun as the one we have with kids. But if you look at a growing, uh, you know, a population of aging people, you see that this very thing that to make sure that you take good care of your older people is important. Um, I, I have to run, and I know you, uh, maybe the show I is. Going... I just uh, extended for three more minutes to for, so that we can oh. have a conversation. We have come to the end of our show. Thank you so much, and uh, I will post their website at my comment and stuff, so you guys know where to go if you're looking to email them and tap into their API. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Thomas. And uh, he Thank has a you for going back to France in an hour, heading out. Yes. So much. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.